Today we have um, speaker Ustad Dr. Wido Supraha who will talk to us about the topic of Islam in Spain. Uh, now about uh, Ustad w uh, Dr. Wido, um, he currently lives in Bogor with his wife and his four ch children. He has completed his doctorate in Islam education and theology from the in in University of Ibn Khaldun in Bogor and now currently works as a lecturer at the same university as well as of as well as a vice president vice director of research and development for, for the indonesian ulama council he also involves himself in many other educational and da'wah activities but before i hand it over to Ustad widow to start his talk i would like to ask everyone to write questions in the chat as we uh, go along as we will be having a question and answer session at the end of his talk and don't forget, we also have a quiz after this. And now, if you would please start, Doctor. Okay, Jazakallah Khairan, uh, Brother Faiz, uh, for your opening uh, session. Uh, firstly, uh, I apologize if my English uh, is not good enough for you, uh, because English is not my native now. Uh, uh, to start uh, this uh, valuable session, uh, please uh, we read the eight classroom adapts. One, straighten intention. Second, wearing hijab like face if possible and student dress code. Three, turn your video on. Four, mute your microphone unless it's your turn to speak. Five, raise your hand if you want to say something. Six, stay seated. Seven, do not do other tasks while the class is ongoing. And eight, come prepared. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma anfa'na bima allamtana wa alimna bima yanfa'una wa zidna ilma. Uhayyikum jami'an bi tahiyyatil islamil khalidah wa tahiyyatil islamis salam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala imamil muttaqin wa qa'idil mujahidin Sayyidina Muhammadin Nabil Ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahudahum ila yawmiddin amma ba'd My uh, uh, greeting to Hos Kiba, uh, to the, the leader of Kibar UK, uh, Mr. Suhendri, uh, Dr. Wannabe insyaAllah uh, uh, at Nottingham ya yeah. And also uh, other brother and sister, uh, Alhamdulillah, you have a valuable time in uh, UK to uh, find knowledge yeah, and we waiting for you uh, in Indonesia uh, to go together in da'wah. Okay, I'm asking uh, to all of your child yeah, to... Uh, to uh, to answer ten questions, which uh, you can see the link uh, in the chat room. Yeah. So uh, I wanna uh, you guide your child to answer by themselves uh, to enjoy in filling the ten ten questions by clicking uh, the link in the chat room. I'm waiting for five minutes to see you filling all questions uh, and submit. Uh, I think five minutes is enough. Yeah. Okay. We starting. Uh, Brother Faiz also can uh, also get involved. Yeah. Please uh, click uh, the link. But Mr. Eko Kurniawan uh, do not have to. Yeah. Uh, his child also. Okay. That's the link. Yeah. Please uh, uh, have your time to to click the link. In five minutes, uh, it will be uh, the quiz before we start the the discussion. Please let me know if anyone already uh, answer.
now five. Uh, what's the time now in there? It's uh, five twenty p.m. here. Ten twenty. Sorry. It's ten twenty now. Oh, ten ten twenty in the morning, eh? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, now so then we maybe five minutes too long, eh? Uh, because the question is simple. Is Brother Faiz the son of Mr. Eko Kurniawan? Yeah. Masyaallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for Mr. Jasmine. You already submit the question. I am waiting for another. I know it is uh, hard enough for a child, but it's okay. It's just uh, repairing our knowledge. Okay, thank you for Putra, uh, but I don't know, there is uh, the name Kalib here, I think it's Kalib, <laughs> what's the name of Kalib, is it the real name, Kalib? So there are three. Okay, three minutes left. Oh, Kalib means Chalif Ansori. Is it right? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for um, uh, thank you to Amania, Anur, Firnaz, Wafi, and Wafa. There are seven answers totally. We are still waiting. How many child? Are, is it twenty or thirty? Thank you for Nabahan Zakari. Yeah, the new submit. Okay, one minute, oh, one minute left. Thank you for Abid. Uh, thank you to Abid and Ayas. Uh, Rijal's mom. Or oh, is it 
his mom or Rijal's. Okay, no problem. The moms get involved. Okay, uh, the time I think is over. Yeah, uh, anyone we need to wait, please your voice. Okay, no, yeah. Uh, thank you. Now we will see the result. Yeah, no, no problem because we are now uh, still uh, learning. Uh, we will see the result. Yeah. Okay, I'm share screen to see the result. So there are ten questions. Yeah. Uh, and this is the result. Yeah. This is the result. Uh, there are three persons who are the highest rank, Abid and Ayaz, Wafi and Wafa, and Nabahan Zakhari. Yeah, thank you very much. And and then uh, uh, Hanif Amania Putra, uh, the second. Yeah, and then Mahogani Yusuf Jasmin uh, at the third level. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, we will answer and review the answer of uh, uh, for this ten question uh, maybe after yeah before the door prize. Okay, now uh, let's uh, begin the uh, the lecturing. So the what is it? The title of our discussion today is the rise of Umayyah. Yeah, the rise of Umayyah. Okay, the rise of Umayyah. Now I'm starting with the table, yeah, to uh, to to make you easy to uh, understanding the period of each caliphate. We see here that Abu Bakar as Siddiq radiallahu taala anhu only uh, lived for two years, and then Umar bin Al Khattab uh, ten years. Yeah, uh, Usman bin Affan, 13 years, Ali bin Abi Talib, five years, and Hassan bin Ali, uh, only uh, six months. Yeah, only six months. What we will talk today is Bani Umayyah, yeah, Umayyah, the caliphate which is uh, starting by Muawiyah bin Abu Sofyan, which have period. Uh, not 82, yeah. The the right is 91, yeah. 91 years, yeah. 91 years. Okay. Uh, if we calculate period from Abu Bakar to Hassan bin Ali, then we know now that we have uh, five uh, the great person as part of Khulafa ur Rashidin. Yeah, not only four, but five. This is also uh, correlated yeah, or related with uh, what Prophet say, where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al khilafatu fi ummati salasuna sana, summa mulkan ba'da zalika. Al khilafah will be in my ummah for 30 years, then there will be monarchy after that. So it means monarchy, not the caliphate. Monarchy means the king. Uh, and Ibn Taymiyyah said that the first king yeah, uh, is uh, Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan. But Muawiyah uh, leading with the, uh, uh, what is it, with, with justice. Yeah? Uh, leading with justice. Uh, so uh, from this uh, perspective, then, uh, uh, we are talking about the dynasty of uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what uh, of Umayyah? Yeah, the dynasty of Umayyah. Although there are uh, another perspective that, uh, according to what is it? Uh, to the hadith, yeah, from uh, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where uh, Nabi said, "Inna hazal amra la yanqadi hatta yamdiya fihim isna ashara khalifatan." So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "There are twelve 
uh, calipates yeah uh, in this period of uh, end of uh, life yeah uh, who is the 12th calipate uh, there are different opinion here uh, some say that uh, like al imam as suyuti the 12th calipate mentioned here is abu bakar umar usman ali hassan bin ali muawiyah ibn zubair Umar bin Abdul Aziz, this is eight caliphate. And then uh, there are uh, like Umar bin Abdul Aziz, uh, there are uh, Al Muhtadi, uh, At Tahir, and the remain two caliphate is Imam Al Mahdi. Uh, one of them is Imam Al Mahdi. This is according to Al Imam Al Suyuti, which can be found in his book, Tarikh Al Khulafa. Yeah. Uh, different opinion also coming from Shia. Yeah. Shia uh, is not a part of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah. They said that there are 12 caliphates. Ali, Hussein, Ali Zain al-Abidin, Muhammad al-Baqir, Ja'far al-Sadiq, Musa al-Kazim, Ali al-Ridha, Muhammad al-Jawad, Ali al-Hadi, Hassan al-Ashkari, Muhammad al-Muntazar. And then uh, they have uh, imamah like Wilayatul Faqih. Yeah, uh, which uh, 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 they they are waiting now for the the twelfth Imam, uh, which is they call Imam Mahdi. This is different opinion from Shia, but Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah uh, commonly uh, uh, follow the Asyuti uh, opinion. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see uh, what happened in Damascus, Syria, before ISIS. Uh, uh, and there are war there where U.S., uh, Russia, China uh, getting involved to Damascus. Damascus is uh, an heritage of uh, Bani Umayyah. But now, after that incident, many, many, uh, what is it, uh, the beautifulness of this heritage yeah, is omitted. Yeah. So while we are talking about the Bani Umayyah, we should uh, talk about the Damascus because Damascus Syria is the first, yeah, the first uh, city, the first uh, what is it, uh, country which is built by uh, Umayyah, and we see uh, like this mosque, yeah, uh, the Damascus uh, Syria, uh, the the great mosque of Damascus, yeah. Uh, before and after, yeah. Before and after. Also, we can see here uh, from the uh, city itself. Yeah, uh, it's very sad. Yeah, to see that uh, Islam, this ummah, uh, has no power to defend ourselves from uh, uh, kufar. Yeah, from uh, kufar. Okay. Now we are talking about who is uh, Bani Umayyah. Talking about Bani Umayyah, we, are, we need to start with Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan. Muawiyah is a descendant of the Umayyads, the Quraysh tribe. So he is from Quraysh. The name Umayyah is taken from Umayyah bin Abdul Sham, yeah, Abu Sufyan's grandfather. Yeah, Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan and Umayyah uh, is the Abu Sufyan grandfather. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, when we are talking about the rising of the Bani Umayyah, actually we uh, cannot separate uh, uh, this story uh, uh, because it's starting from the Tahkim incident after the Shifin War in Daumatul Jandal, yeah, in Daumatul Jandal, where this is fitnah, uh, one of fitnah kubro in uh, in Muslim in Muslim body. Where uh, by the end, Hassan bin Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu sent a message of, fee, of peace to Muawiyah through Amr bin Salma al-Arabi. Then uh, through Abdullah bin al-Harith bin Naufal radiallahu ta'ala anhu sending the terms of willingness to hand over power from Hassan bin Ali to Muawiyah yeah, by uh, some prerequisites such as uh, hand over the asset of Baitul Mal to him to pay off his debt to other parties, not insulting the Caliph Ali bin Abi Talib, the father of Hassan bin Ali, submit taxes on Persian land and the Bijinat area to Hassan every year. The issue of the Caliphate must be left to Muslim, yeah, because uh, monarchy 
is not uh, a, a part of uh, Islamic uh, teaching. It, it didn't attract anything from the inhabitants of Medina, Hijaz, and Iraq, as was the policy of Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And it happened in the month of Rabiul Awal, 41 Hijriah, yeah, an agreement between Hassan bin Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu to elect one leader marked the appointment of the oath of allegiance in the Muskin area. Uh, and uh, uh, we also know the tragedy of Karbala, which is uh, uh, happened to not Hassan but to Hussein, yeah, where Hussein bin Ali moved from Medina to Makkah. While by the time Ali supporters in Kufa, uh, who didn't support Muawiyah, asked Hussein to go to Kufa to take allegiance as Caliph, we know that. Even though, uh, or even though it was forbidden by the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, such as Abdullah bin Abbas, Abdullah bin Omar, Abdullah bin Zubair, Abu Said al Khudri, Abdullah bin Amr, Muhammad al Hanafiya, uh, Hussein's half brother, and several other friends, Hussein still went to Kufa. Yeah, uh, this is the reality. Well, Hussein heard. The killing of Muslim bin Aqil, the nephew of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi Actually, it it uh, has made Hussein aware that his decision was wrong. But by the time the request of Muslim children to uphold justice for the killing of Muslim kept him going, then Ubaidillah bin Ziyad sent one hundred uh, one thousand people led by Al Hurru bin Yazid at Tamimi to block Hussein from entering Kufa. At Karbala, another 4,000 troops from Ubaidillah came, led by Umar bin Sa'ad, and there was a war between 70, 73 people and 5,000 people. All the 30 people who joined al Hurru moved to support Hassan. In the end, all of them were killed. Yeah, Amr bin Zil uh, Jaushian sought Hussein, and the head of Hussein uh, beheaded Sinan uh, bin Anas. Yeah, this is the sad story. Uh, uh, of the beginning, yeah, uh, of the beginning, and related to Umayyah. Okay, now we are talking about uh, the dynasty ninety-one years. The dynasty ninety-one years uh, uh, has fourteen caliphates along the period. Yeah, has uh, fourteen uh, caliphates along the period, starting from Muawiyah bin Abu Sofyan, and then he chose his child. Uh, to be the successor is Yazid bin Muawiyah. This is the first uh, incident actually in terms of knowledge because uh, Islam uh, didn't, uh, 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 we, we are not learned to choose our kids or our son to, uh, to, to be our successor because uh, we believe on Ahlul Halli wal Aqdi yeah, because everything must be uh, under surah. But uh, of course, Muawiyah bin Abu Sofyan uh, probably uh, they uh, he has make uh, ijtihad based on the what happened uh, and the condition, the real condition by that time. Yeah, we try to understand uh, the decision of Muawiyah by that time. Then he chose Yazid bin Muawiyah, and then Muawiyah bin Yazid, Marwan bin Hakam, Abdul Malik bin Marwan, Walid bin Abdul Malik. Sulaiman bin Abdul Malik, Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Yeah, Umar bin Abdul Aziz is the eight caliphates. Yeah, he is uh, the sign, uh, 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 the greatest uh, caliphate. Yeah, although he only lived uh, for around four years. Yeah, uh, since uh, one hundred uh, one to one hundred five, and then Hisham bin Abdul Malik, Walid bin Yazid, Yazid bin Walid, Ibrahim bin Walid. And Marwan bin Muhammad, the last caliphate, yeah, uh, uh, for so the dynasty of Umayyad uh, is never reached 100 years. Yeah, it's uh, already uh, end by uh, 91 years. Okay, now we need to know further about uh, who is Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Muawiyah, uh, who is the 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 founder of Bani Umayyah. Uh, has converted to Islam at the age of 23 years after Fatu Makkah. 
or after the Hudaybiyah agreement in six before Hijriah. Uh, uh, six after Hijriah, uh, sorry. Uh, he served for 20 years as governor and 20 years as caliph. So Muawiyah is very, uh, what is it, very, very good in leader. Yeah? He is one of the writers of Wahyu. Yeah? Uh, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muawiyah is the important commander in the era of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Muawiyah is the best governor from Damascus at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Yeah. And Muawiyah conqueror, uh, is a conqueror of many areas in Syria and formers of great naval forces at the time of, of Usman. Yeah. So when, uh, uh, when we ask yeah, about who the founder of the Navy technology in Islam, uh, uh, so now we can say it is Muawiyah. Yeah. When the uh, time of Umar Khalifat, Muawiyah already uh, uh, proposed to Umar to approve him to build the Navy technology. But Umar by that time do not, uh, uh, didn't approve because he do not know much about, uh, 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 about this. Yeah? But uh, different with Usman, uh, while uh, Muawiyah reproposed again to have the Navy uh, uh, system in their military, uh, Usman above it, yeah, and uh, 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 by that time uh, we already have the uh, navy technology. And if we learn the the period until uh, Us, uh, what is it? Until Osmania, yeah, until the Caliphate of Osmania, like uh, uh, <coughs> which is found by the uh, Osman bin Ertugrul, until Sultan Abdul Hamid. Uh, 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 two, the 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 highest technology of navy uh, from uh, Islam is uh, what is 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 acknowledged by many parties. Even German uh, uh, need to learn more about this to Sultan Abdul Hamid too. Yeah. So the inspiration coming from Muawiyah uh, for this navy technology. Muawiyah also the founder of the first post office and stem maker so it's not only good in military but also good in administration muawiyah maintaining no conflict in his reign except for a small part of the khawarij yeah the remains uh, uh, which come up in ali bin abi talib era muawiyah also is a conqueror of all of north africa khorasan sijistan and countries across the river Johan. And Muawiyah died at the age of 77 years in the month of Rajab. Yeah, this is uh, Muawiyah. And now I'm uh, choosing Abdul Malik bin Marwan to, uh, to, uh, to learn because uh, our limited time, we need to find uh, uh, the, the, be the best, yeah, the best uh, leader in this period. Yeah. Uh, there are, uh, we, we have Abdul Malik bin Marwan. Abdul Malik bin Marwan bin Hakam bin Abil Al's bin Umayyah became caliph at the age of 39 on the will of his father, yeah, uh, Marwan bin Hakam. He was the governor of Medina previously at the age of 16. Yeah. So Abdul Malik already be the governor of Medina at the age of 16. Yeah, and is known as a scholar. So this is related to what Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi already done in his age, while many uh, uh, people already be a scholar uh, before 20 years old. Yeah. Before 20 years. So the education system has made uh, people uh, getting in uh, get uh, what is it get a scholar before 20 yeah uh, in abdul malik bin marwan era yeah in abdul malik uh, bin marwan era yeah uh, 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 he faced with several events like she uh, shia rebellion yeah so there are rebellion from shia and then rejection of abdullah bin zubair 
ya uh, companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then Khawarij rebellion and also rebellion of Amru bin Sa'ad ya Abdul Malik bin Marwan also successfully mastered Masa Isa under the leadership of Abdullah bin Abdul Malik also Abdul Malik bin Marwan successfully occupied the Carthaginian fortress in North Africa defeating the Romans Abdul Malik bin Marwan chasing the barbarians led by Queen Kahina in Algeria uh, also established a high court to try deviating officials returning the official language to Arabic after Persian and Roman yeah uh, also Abdul Malik established arms and warship factory in Tunisia Abdul Malik bin Marwan also made its own currency in 76 uh, Hijriah and Abdul Malik bin Marwan building the Masjid Umar or Qubba to Sakhra in Jerusalem, expanding the Grand Mosque and rebuilding the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Yeah. This is uh, some of uh, the goodness of Abdul Malik bin Marwan. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then uh, we choose Walid bin Abdul Malik. Yeah. Who is Walid Abdul bin Abdul Malik? Then his name is Al Walid bin Abdul Malik bin Marwan bin Hakam bin Abdul Az bin Umayyah bin Abdul Sham bin Abdul Manaf. Uh, he was born in 50 Hijriah, the sixth Umayyad uh, dynasty caliph. Uh, by the time uh, he he is supported by two best governors, namely Umar bin Abdul Aziz in Haramain and Hajjaj bin Yusuf in Iraq. Yeah, uh, out of uh, the 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 notes of Hajjaj bin Yusuf, but uh, actually uh, these two governors already make the stabilization uh, uh, in Walid bin Abdul Malik uh, leadership period. Yeah, especially Umar bin Abdul Aziz in Haramain. Walid bin Abdul Malik conquering Central Asia like Transoxania, Uzbekistan now part of it uh, from Turkey by that time. And then conquering North Africa led by Musa bin Nusair. Conquering Spain from the Gothic by sending 7,000 troops with warships led by Tariq bin Ziyad to the strait named Jabal Tariq or Gibraltar to control Sidona, Cremona, Granada, Cordova. And then assisted by Musa bin Nusair with 18,000 troops controlling Zaragoza, Terragona, and Barcelona. So we know it's very productive. Walid bin Abdul Malik is very productive. Yeah? So the expansion uh, he made is very valuable. The first time, uh, so Walid bin Abdul Malik also, the first, uh, uh, the first caliphate, the first leader yeah, who created the tower into the mosque architecture. Yeah, he is the first who create the tower into the mosque architecture. It started with the restoration of the Basilica of St. John, yeah, or Yahya, uh, according to Catholic, into the Umayyah Mosque, and then followed by the Nabawi Mosque. Yeah. So Umayyah Mosque first have tower, and then uh, followed by Nabawi Mosque. Yeah, this is the history. And Walid bin Abdul Malik died at the age of 46 left a stable country and then he was replaced by his brother Sulaiman bin Abdul Malik yeah. okay after Walid bin Abdul so who is uh, 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 the founder of the tower in the mosque it is Walid bin Abdul Malik yeah. who is uh, 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 someone very res responsible to do the restoration from Basilica of St. John into Umayyah Mosque yeah, this is Walid bin Abdul Malik, yeah? and Umayyah must uh, be the the reference yeah, of many great mosques uh, later. Uh, 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 and then uh, we choose Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Yeah? Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz is very good, yeah, because uh, uh, not all uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz also has uh, clear uh, uh, what is it. Uh, Nasab yeah, with uh, Umar bin Al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. His justice and wisdom impressed Khalid Sulaiman by that time. So uh, previously, uh, uh, Sulaiman bin Abdul Malik replaced Walid bin Abdul Malik. Yeah? 
but uh, who replaced uh, Sulaiman uh, bin Abdul Walid not his son but Umar bin Abdul Aziz because uh, his justice and wisdom yeah the justice and wisdom of, of Umar bin Abdul Aziz uh, already impressed Khalid Sulaiman so that he had the intention of making Umar his successor yeah the will uh, was read and then Umar bin Abdul Aziz bin, War, bin Marwan bin Hakam who is he he was born in Halwan in a village in Egypt yeah in in village in Egypt his father Abdul Aziz bin Marwan governor of Egypt younger brother of Khalid Abdul Malik yeah his mother was Layla Ummu Asim binti Asim this is the grandson of Umar bin Al Khattab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu yeah Uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz married to Fatima, the daughter of Khalifa Abdul Malik. And then Abdul Malik assigned Umar as governor of Medina at the age of 24. Yeah. Of 24, Umar bin Abdul Aziz already the leader in uh, 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 Mecca and Medina, yeah, especially in Medina. Yeah. To quell the population of Medina. Yeah, by the previous governor Hisham bin, Al- bin Ismail Al Makhzumi. Yeah, many uh, Madinah people do not like Governor Hisham bin Ismail Al Makhzumi. Then Abdul Malik assigned Omar, yeah, uh, to uh, restoration the condition, uh, to do the restoration for uh, of the condition. And he began his Khilafah while Umar bin Abdul Aziz uh, already chose as the uh, uh, Caliphate. He began his khilafah by handling, uh, uh, by handing over all personal assets to Baitul Mal. Yeah. After selling his wealth, yeah, all of his wealth uh, is calculated uh, by 23,000 dinars or 12 billions yeah, uh, in average now, according to Al Baghdadi. He put all of his wealth into Baitul Mal. It is Umar bin Abdul Aziz, and Umar bin Abdul Aziz prefer and choosing to stay at home, not in the palace. And Umar bin Abdul Aziz is very well known, never take a nap and eat well. Yeah. Uh, also, Umar bin Abdul Aziz to make interest of Christian, they cut Christian taxes, they stop taxes on convert, so that the result many. Uh, Christian convert to Islam by uh, his period. The state treasury is used to build public facilities such as irrigation, new dug wells, lodging in Damascus for travelers, beautifying mosque, and free medical facilities. So in Umar bin Abdul Aziz, the hospital is free, yeah, uh, free medical facilities. Uh, uh, all is built by the wealth of country and also by wakaf yeah. and then in umar bin abdul aziz uh, do foster entrepreneurship uh, and provide stimulants to eight groups of mustahid it is told by ibn abdul hakam in his sirah book that yahya bin said distributed zakat in africa but didn't find anyone who was entitled to receive it There were no more debts, and the marriage was paid for. Conquest was replaced by preaching, so that the king of sin, by that time, converted to Islam because this preaching, and followed by his people. Yeah, this is the beauty of uh, the leadership in Umar bin Abdul Aziz period. Yeah. Okay, and then we. Uh, talk uh, about Hisham bin Abdul Malik. Yeah. Who is Hisham bin Abdul Malik? He was born in 70 Hijri. He is the son of Caliph Abdul Malik bin Marwan, a fan of literature, putri, and uh, uh, and then he replaced Yazid bin Abdul Malik at the age of 35. Yeah, he is a military strategist whom Europe greatly feared. And was happy to receive input from scholars. Yeah, Hisham bin Abdul Malik is very good uh, in military, and also uh, he's very close to scholars, yeah, to ulama. And then Hisham bin Abdul Malik, by that time, appointed Commander Anbasa bin Shuhain Al Kalbi 
as governor of Andalusia, replacing the fallen Sammah bin Malik al Qaulani. The commander of Anbasa fought across the Pyrene Mountains and conquered the, the Narbonne region in southern France, continuing to control Marseilles and Avignon lion to Burgundy by the time. Yeah, and then Panglima Anbasa continued to control the north until Seine's fortress on the banks of the Seine, uh, about 100 miles from Paris the capital of Neustria at the time. Karel Martyr, Neustria official, intercept Anbasa's troops until Anbasa dies. So Anbasa dies uh, with Karel uh, Martel, yeah, troops. And then Hisham bin Abdul Malik uh, continue, yeah, uh, the, the, uh, continue this, this struggle. He appointed commander-in-chief Abdurrahman al-Ghafiki replacing Anbasa bringing enough provision for the war in winter. So this war uh, is uh, uh, held in the winter. Until then, yeah, uh, Abdurrahman al-Ghafiki, uh, he succeeded in capturing Toulouse, the capital of Aquitania. And then Karel Martel survived in Aoun uh, Golem Fortress yeah, by that time. And then Hisham bin Abdul Malik died at the age of uh, 55 yeah, at the age of, of 55 so uh, this is uh, uh, the maps yeah the maps the caliphate in 750 uh, hijri yeah uh, there are colors there where the yellow uh, means the conquest of the arab uh, up to the death of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in 632 this is the what is it? Uh, this is the uh, 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 the area, the, the area of Islam until Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And then we see the yellow ones. This is the conquest of the Arabs under the first three caliphs uh, in period six, uh, 632 to 656. Yeah, we see we have Persia, Armenia, yeah, Egypt, Barca, Tripoli. And then in... Uh, Umayyah Caliphs from 661 to 750, you can see the red uh, or the pink one. Yeah, our uh, area now until Hindustan, yeah, until Maghrib, yeah, until Andalus, yeah, this is uh, the white, uh, uh, the power of Umayyad, yeah, the, the, the power of, of Umayyad. Okay. This is the caliphate uh, maps in 750. Yeah. Okay, so based on uh, uh, previous data, uh, we wrap up by uh, in this Umayyah area, the expansion uh, is made uh, progressively. Yeah. In Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan, we have Tunisia, Khurasan, yeah. uh, Khurasan to the Oxus River, Afghanistan to Kabul. Yeah, in its navy began attacking the capitals of Byzantium and Constantinople by that time. Yeah, in era Abdul Malik bin Marwan, uh, we already crossing the Oxus River. Yeah, if in Muawiyah and, uh, until the Oxus River, in Abdul Malik we crossing the Oxus River, conquering Balkanabat, Bukhara, Khawarizm, Fergana, and Samarkand, and continuing on to India, taking control of Baluchistan, Sindh, Punjab to Maltan. And in Walid bin Abdul Malik era, the expedition from North Africa to Europe, from Algeria, Morocco to Gibraltar, Jabal Tariq, you can see the picture in the uh, left below, it's the picture of Jabal Tariq. Yeah. So Walid bin Abdul Malik success to took control of Cordova, the capital of Spain at the time, Sevilla, Elvira, and Toledo, the new capital of Spain. And supported by local people, who suffer from the quality of the authorities by the time. Yeah. This is the uh, greatness, yeah? uh, expansion of the Umayyads. Yeah? Okay, so uh, now we are talking about what's the icon, yeah? what is the icon uh, in Damascus? So we can say uh, uh, the great mosque of Damascus. Yeah? This is Masjid Damascus. Yeah? This is... Uh, 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 apa? Uh, it it collect three 
uh, religion actually yeah by Islam as the leader because uh, we uh, by uh, uh, since the time this most open uh, even for uh, for Catholic who uh, believe that uh, in this uh, area there are uh, Yahya Prophet Yahya and also there are Sphinx yeah, uh, who uh, come up from previous uh, uh, tradition so uh, it collects yeah, uh, a, a peace between religion in uh, Damascus yeah, in, in Damascus mosque yeah, in Masjid Damascus so Masjid Damascus or uh, be an icon of the city of Damascus that inspires the arch the rectangular tower and the max yeah. and uh, the history actually about this mosque uh, previously it's not a mosque it's starting from the temple of Jupiter an ancient Roman relic which later become the church of Saint John the Baptist Basilica late 4th century uh, AD as an offering to John the Baptist considered the prophet Yahya until finally the mosque under the Umayyad dynasty yeah. but in the uh, Umayyad dynasty the peace is made yeah, between this so uh, the masjid is open for uh, anyone who want to see uh, the heritage of each of each belief yeah uh, from this um, masjid from this Damascus uh, masjid uh, there are inspiration to create another uh, uh, mosque so I mean uh, there are three uh, masjid yeah there are three masjid in this world which is uh, established uh, by inspiration from the great mosque of Damascus yeah the first one is in Turkey yeah in Bursa and then in Andalusia yeah and also in uh, Al Azhar yeah Egypt in Fatimiyah uh, uh, dynasty yeah the dashing Cordova mosque stand in the southeast of Madrid standing at the foot of the uh, Sierra de Montena hill the Cordova mosque is a witness to the fame of Islamic civilization on Spanish soil so this is the the Masjid Cordova yeah? now the great mosque of Cordova has turned into a Mezquita Cathedral the mosque was turned into a cathedral during the conquest of Christian armies in the 16th century the central part of the mosque turns into the main altar and the chair the architecture is very typical of Islamic heritage with marble pillars and structures. The architecture of the Mosque of Cordova resembles the structure of the Great Mosque of Damascus, Syria. Calligraphy scratches from the verses of the Quran on the walls of the Mihrab are still preserved, even though it was turned into a cathedral on December 15, 1994. UNESCO designated the Cordova Mosque as one of the most historic and important relics in the world yeah. this is the uh, masjid cordova and also we are talking about the kastrun amratun yeah this is uh, so there are a desert castle located in the territory of eastern jordan this castle was built in the 8th century by walid ibn yazid who later became the umayyad caliph who was nicknamed walid too. The building is known for being an example of early Islamic art and architecture. The palace complex in Qusair Amra was rediscovered in 1898 by the Zeh Orientalis Alois Musil. This small palace is thought to have been built during the reign of Caliph Al Walid, and this beautiful building stands next to an oasis in a semicircle about 80 kilometers east of Amman, Jordan. When found the main buildings that still exist at the throne room in the shape of a square, a meeting room and a bath. The inner walls of the meeting room and throne room are decorated with exquisite frescoes. The ornate decoration in this palace were painted, carved and colored in classical Greco-Roman methods. This was part of the efforts of the Umayyad rulers to align themselves with other rulers and empires of the time. Kosrun Amro has been named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, site. Yeah. So UNESCO has proven 
that this is the uh, what is it uh, the beauty eh? the, the world heritage site Qasrun Amratun okay and then uh, we are talking about Qasrun Hisham yeah? so there are Khirbat Al Mafjar uh, uh, it is situated in the Jordan Valley near Jericho Palestine armed with protective walls the building which was erected by the, the Caliph Hisham in this Umayyad period consists of a palace with two floors a mosque, a large dome bath with meeting rooms, as well as a large courtyard with a fountain in the middle. In the Islamic art and architecture encyclopedia, it is stated that in the baths and meeting rooms, which are very magnificent, there is a swimming pool, yeah, as well as toilets that can accommodate 30 guests at once. The floor for the bath is made of no less than 39 continuous mosaic panels decorated with geometric designs this is the largest floor mosaic in the world that still exists from ancient times another impressive mosaic panel is located in the meeting hall this mosaic depicts a lion attacking a gazelle dessert yeah, yeah, i think uh, you can see the picture on the below yeah how the lion uh, attacking a gazelle here yeah okay uh, and then inspiration from Qasrun al Hayr al Gharbi. This is a palace actually, and this palace was built by the Caliph Hisham at Kushair al Hayr al Gharbi. It is located about 60 kilometers west of Palmyra, and the city of Palmyra itself is about 240 kilometers east of Damascus. The palace complex consists of palace, bath, khan. Yeah, lodging for travelers and agricultural land. It is also equipped with an irrigation system whose wet water is sourced from underground canals connected to an ancient Roman dam at Harbaka, about 16 kilometers to the south. A protective wall with semicircular towers surround the complex. The palace is square with sides 70 meters long. Originally, this building consisted of two floors, although only the lower floors were still there. In addition, what is also still there is a gate with a very beautiful ornate stucco decoration. And this stucco is one of the oldest examples of this type of decoration in the Islamic world, which is made by Sasan craftsmen. And the stucco decoration is now housed in the Damascus National Museum. Yeah. Okay, now we are talking about what uh, and how the deployment of signs, of Islamic signs in this period. Yeah? So, uh, the reality, uh, we know that in this Umayyah period, there are developing sciences yeah, such as medicine, uh, exact science, philosophy, astronomy, geography, history, uh, and language. Yeah? And language. And most based education, yeah, so uh, most by the time is most based education is centered in many cities such as Damascus, Kuva, Makkah, Medina, Egypt, Cordova, Granada, and many madrasas and educational institutions have started. Yeah. The first hospital, yeah, uh, you need to know that the first hospital is coming from Islam. And the name is not a hospital. The name is Bimaristan. Uh, was established firstly, namely Anur, by the Caliph Walid bin Abdul Malik, with the most modern equipment and professional health workers of its time. Yeah. So Bimaristan is the name of the first hospital, and it is free for every people who want to check their health uh, in this place. Yeah. And also, in this period, there are deployment of D1. What is D1? Yeah, D1 is coming uh, from Persian, Diwana, means note or list, and developed into a D1 repository. It is uh, a, a part of, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, administration things. Yeah. So the initial, actually, the initial inspiration from Umar bin al-Khattab, from the D1, each rule was issued by the caliph, and copied in one register and the original was sealed and sent to the destination address so there are process yeah uh, 
there, there are a goodness in document uh, uh, by the time. Uh, in this period, there are four important D1, namely the tax officer, the correspondence officer, the receiving personnel, the stamp D1. Yeah. There is also D1 who regulates policy and army affairs. Yeah. This is D1. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, in this period, uh, uh, Umayyah who uh, firstly building the post office and the name is Barit. Yeah. The name is Barit. Actually, Barit coming from Persian words, Baridah, which means the cut off of the tail, refers to the distinction between a horse sending document from a common horse. And Barit also means the distance traveled uh, 12 kilometers, is the, the meaning of the Barit. Uh, the Barit officers is, all, is the men who were free to enter and exit the palace at any time due to the importance of the documents being sent. Yeah, so they bring the valuable document which is required by the uh, caliphate. Yeah, uh, if uh, we talk uh, today, uh, if you know there are bin in Indonesia, uh, Badan Intelligence Nasional, uh, it, it also functions as bin, as a messenger of confidential news from the regions to the central government, yeah. and also in the defense uh, sector, yeah, uh, what Umayyah doing is threatening the surtah or police. Yeah, so this is the first time founded Darus Surtah, Darus Surtah Al Ulya in Al in Al Muashkar. Yeah, after Darus Surtah Al Sufla in Fustad by Salih bin Ali Al Abbasi. So this is the office, the good office of Surtah. And the police, which was previously under the justice, were then separated with the task of supervising and taking care of royal matters. So there are police for the royal matters and there are police for the justice uh, for all. Uh, and then uh, uh, creating Umayyad dynasty armed forces yeah, by divide uh, uh, soldiers into five units, like in Persia, namely the heart of the army, the right army, the left army, the introduction army, and companion uh, army. And then uh, built a ship factory in uh, 54 Hijri, and then starting to learn from Byzantium, then become a teacher of the European nation yeah, in this ship, uh, ship factory. Yeah. Okay, and also in uh, justice, yeah, the judiciary is divided by the time into three levels. Al Qadha for religious matters, Al Hisba for criminal matters, and Al Mazalim for case of high officials and judge. Yeah, and judge. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, in this Mazalim, attended by defenders, assistant, advisors, fiqih expert, secretaries, witnesses. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, after we know the 91 years of the uh, Umayyad. We also need to know because uh, Umayyah do not, uh, what is it, uh, do not end completely. Because uh, we know that Abdurrahman ad dakhili continue, uh, continuing uh, the Umayyah uh, into Andalusia. And there are eight, uh, what is it, there are eight uh, uh, emirate of the Umayyah from Abdurrahman ad dakhil Hisham, Al Hakam, Abdurrahman Al Ausad, Muhammad, Al Munzir, he uh, uh, and then until Abdurrahman Al Nasir, and then by the time uh, Andalusia uh, is take over from the uh, Crusader, yeah, uh, dengan pasukan salibnya. Okay, so uh, why then Umayyah Caliphate uh, 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 omitted and and then. Uh, 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 lose because uh, there are some uh, analysis here. Yeah, uh, we collect all analysis from the expert here uh, because they leave the deliberation system and replace it with a monarchy system. So the the supporting uh, from the people is decreased, and then the non-Arab group, yeah, uh, uh, which is called Mawali. So there are Arab and non-Arab. Yeah, uh, the non-Arab, uh, who is always called by Mawali, disapprove in Iraq, in particular with the status of Mawali. 
And then also there are agreement between Hassan bin Ali uh, previously, as you know, which is not implemented, yeah, uh, especially uh, related how the uh, success of the caliphate. And then the appointment of the crown prince is more than one. The nature of some leaders who are corrupt and luxurious uh, and then do not substitute expertise and the appearance of Ad, uh, uh, Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib who received support from Bani Hashim, Mawali and several other groups that after 91 years uh, the leadership of Umayyah replaced by Abbasiyah. Yeah. Okay, brother and sister, I think that's all what I need to uh, say by this valuable time. Yeah, thank you for your patience. And I will uh, uh, end with the reviewing, yeah, with the reviewing the answer of 10 questions previously. And I think uh, you already now know, yeah, the answer of the previous 10 questions. Yeah, let us uh, 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 check together, yeah. Who is the mother of Muawiyah? Yeah. Who is the mother of Muawiyah? Yeah. The, the mother of Muawiyah is Hindun binti Utbah. Yeah. Hindun binti Utbah. The wife of Abu Sufyan. Question number two. Yeah. Question, uh, question number two. Yeah. Uh, how long is the period of the leadership of Khulafaur Rashidin? Based on hadith? How many? 30 years in total. And this is one of the mu'jizat yeah, of Prophet Muhammad SAW where he knows that the Qulaf al-Rashidin maximum in 30 years and after that monarchy. Uh, question number three, uh, number three. How long is the period of Umayyad dynasty? The answer is 91 years. Question number four. Who is the name of Kalipat? Abu Bakar as Siddiq, Ali bin Abi Talib, Usman bin Affan, Umar bin Al Khattab, and Hassan bin Ali. Yeah. So there are five Kalipats. Yeah. Any question? Okay. Yeah. We continue first. Who is one of the rising Kalipat of Umayyah? Yeah. The answer is, of course, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, because the, from the fourteen. Kalipet in 91 years, there are no name of Harun al Rashid, Abu Abbas al Safa, Al Muhtadi al Muntazir because these four names is coming from Abbasia. Yeah. So only Umar bin Abdul Aziz and he is the rising Kalipet of Umayyah. Who is the grandchild of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Now, not Muslim bin Akil because Muslim bin Akil is nephew of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, not Ubaidillah bin Abbas, not also Qasim bin Fatima, because there is no Qasim bin Binti Fatima. So the answer is Hassan and Hussein. Yeah. Uh, and then what is the duty of Muawiyah before being the first king in Islam? Yeah, Muawiyah, the answer is governor of Damascus. Yeah. Governor of Damascus, not Baghdad, not Azerbaijan. Okay. In which caliphate were in two years where he didn't find anyone who was entitled to receive zakah. Who is the name? Is Omar, Omar bin Abdul Aziz. Yeah, Omar bin Abdul Aziz. Okay. Question number nine. What is the duty of Omar bin Abdul Aziz before assigned as caliphate? Yeah. Please, Faiz. Uh, I'm asking you. Who is... Uh, what is the duty of Umar bin Abdul Aziz before assigned as a caliphate? Uh, was he the... Sorry, I think I got that one wrong actually. Uh, Anyone can help Faiz? Anyone can help brother Faiz? Governor of Medina. Okay, this is the father or child? Sorry. Please okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Sorry. Uh, the, the answer is correct. Is governor of Madinah. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, and then the last question. Who is the founder of the first Navy technology? Anyone can can help me? 
Who is the founder of the First Navy Technology? Is, is he Umar, Muawiyah Ali, or Umar bin Abdul Aziz? Imam Ahmad Hilmi want to ask? Okay, Faiz, please take your turn. Uh, it's the first one, Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan. Baik, Barakallahu Fik, Faiz bin Eko Kurniawan. Baik, Jazakumullah Khairan. Yeah, this is uh, our discussion. Please, if you have another question to me, Uh, before the door prize from the committee. Thank you very much. And also uh, my greeting also to uh, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Rahman, yeah, that might uh, still attend this uh, session. And also Dr. Muhammad Arif uh, Rahman uh, as the education and culture attached in Indonesian Embassy uh, in London. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your Uh, time uh, in this session. Thank you very much. Uh, I give the time back to Faiz. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Ustad. So now, if anyone has any questions, they can just put their hands up or type in the chat. Oh, we have some questions here, actually. Um, yeah, a lot of them from. Uh, Mr. Rahman, he's asking how to best study Islam, uh, Islamic history for our reflection in the present. And yeah, and okay. you could answer that. How to best study Islamic history for our reflection in the present? I think the first thing we need to uh, to have the authoritative uh, resources firstly we need to choose the authoritative resources because uh, history is a subject which is uh, which is very open for politic intervention in there so by the uh, by this uh, perspective we need to find the good and authoritative resources uh, and also to find uh, the original uh, copy from the scholars which is uh, closer in his life uh, into uh, this situation uh, which is still available until today yeah? so i think uh, this is my uh, recommendation thank you uh, he has a few more questions so he has um, how can we as individuals be involved in the making of history yeah Uh, at, uh, if we do not some, uh, doing something, also it is our history. Yeah? So we need to make something uh, uh, to get involved uh, in the history. So that's why uh, we need to create the history. Uh, the history is uh, uh, today we we know, but Islam now in not in the uh, in in not leading now, because uh, as we know from revolution. 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. It is the standard of the West. Yeah, from the founding, the what is it? Uh, 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 in UK in uh, 1740, and then uh, electricity, computation, and also in uh, uh, artificial intelligence and, and Internet of Things. This is actually the standard of uh, Western civilization. But uh, Islamic civilization need to be built up again. Where uh, now Western already uh, uh, have no narration uh, to have a peace in this world, and this is the time for Islam to uh, offer to offer our narration, to offer our solution uh, uh, in this uh, in this period. Yeah. Now. I think we need to uh, get involved. Yes, I agree. Uh, together uh, with all Muslim brother and sister all over the world, uh, we need to uh, to lead. Yeah, we need to uh, have a trendsetter, not a follower. Yeah, uh, and for this uh, for this thing, we need to uh, to do the Islamization of knowledge firstly. Yeah, because uh, today knowledge uh, uh, commonly is Westernized. We need to. Uh, f uh, we need to uh, have ability to read and to know the problem and to uh, to localize the problem and to input our value 
uh, before we continue the continuing the improvement and the deployment of uh, 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 science. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, he has also he also has another question, and it goes: uh, What part of Islamic histories that we can use for our reflection and understand for our present and future of Islamic histories? I think uh, we need to start with the uh, history of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because all of his life uh, we will get many uh, many inspiration. Yes, for example, uh, now we we know there are pension period because we are working with institution. But if we learn from the history of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we know that in uh, 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 in his uh, 55 years old, he, he do not take a pension. Uh, uh, at, in 55 years old, uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, is ob uh, have an obligation to uh, fasting Ramadan, to jihad, yeah? and then from 55 to 63, Prophet Muhammad is very productive. Yeah? Is very productive. Uh, so. This is uh, uh, inspiration from the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and this inspiration uh, and then take taken from many dynasty, even from Umayyah, Abbasiyah, yeah, uh, uh, Usmania, uh, uh, Mogul, yeah, Safawiyah, Fatimiya, Ayubiyah, and others. Yeah, so many dynasty. There are plus and minus, but we need to get some positive aspect here. Yeah? Uh, from uh, the history, we know from the uh, history that there are there are uh, uh, increase and the, and the decrease. But one thing that never decrease is the deployment of knowledge, uh, the preaching, and it's not related with the politics itself. Thank you. And I think this should be the last one. Uh, how to make Islamic histories become the forces for Ummah to make better histories in the future? How to make Islamic history become the forces for Umar to make better histories in the future? I think we need to uh, continue the effort to rewriting the sources which is authoritative. Because, for example, the history of Islam in Indonesia narrative uh, previously in today books is uh, we can criticize because so many aspects which not uh, saying about the Islam. Uh, 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 contribution uh, uh, very uh, very uh, comprehensive yeah so I think we need to rewrite uh, ulang uh, uh, rewrite yeah, the history there are some scholar already starting it and we need to support them and then we need to continue because uh, as we know uh, if we do not uh, understand the history then there are uh, generation that do not know nothing just for a uh, case, uh, just for a case study, we can learn from uh, from Turkey. Yeah, what we can learn from Turkey? Turkey only uh, require around 70 years uh, or 50 years to make from the Muslim uh, thinking into the secularization thinking. So, uh, in uh, youth people, they only know Kemal Ataturk. Uh, how then uh, Erdogan uh, recreate the history? Yeah, not in political way, but from the culture, they create uh, the film like Ertugrul, Osman, uh, Payitat, Abdul Hamid II, uh, uh, Selchuklu, Buyuk Selchuklu, and also he used the name of, uh, for for example, we know that the greatest uh, bridge now in uh, Turkey is Osman Bridge. Any uh, youth people asking, who is Osman? Why Osman uh, have the uh, bridging? So now uh, they, uh, they they starting to asking, to learning, who, who is Ertugrul? You know that the uh, Ertugrul, or is it the uh, kuburan? Yeah, kuburan daripada Ertugrul in, in so good. There are no uh, youth people know it about it. But now uh, the uh, it is uh, make uh, in very nice uh, today. There are uh, something <coughs> tradition new create. So now you people starting to learn how uh, who is Ertugrul, who is Osman, who is uh, uh, Sulaiman Shah, and something. So 
uh, now they open mind not uh, that uh, the the greatest people not only Kemal Ataturk but there are the real story of Turkey so every uh, people has their own story we are in Indonesia also have our own history uh, but uh, sometimes because uh, Indonesian uh, because Muslim in Indonesia do not have like Borobudur do not have like uh, uh, other big uh, big statue but we uh, uh, we have uh, notes we have document we have architecture we have uh, uh, something which is uh, need to rewrite so then there are no loose generation that do not know uh, the contribution of uh, Islam in scientific tradition in uh, Nusantara yeah. okay uh, I think thank you can I yeah, ask last question okay can I ask last question yeah yeah okay the problem is now we are in the UK we are Indonesian we are in the UK so how can we I would say, make us aware of Islam in the UK, maybe, I don't know, would that be a good idea? I mean, like, visiting mosques in the UK, uh, telling stories about, like, British Muslims who become heroes or something like that. Well, what do you think about that, Ustad? Yeah, 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 in the UK. Think, yeah, yeah. Uh, even in UK and in Indonesia, mosque is not only a place for praying. Mosque uh, need to be... Uh, uh, a center of culture, a center of knowledge, yeah, and a center of service. This is the most. Yeah. Uh, as we know, uh, uh, Bani uh, uh, Umayyah already started it. And if we talking about the Usmania, very very greatness uh, uh, make uh, in, uh, in term of masjid. Yeah. So I think we need, uh, to, uh, as we know, like we, uh, when we open the Quran from 6236 uh, verses inside yeah we we found that uh, the verses of story uh, mo uh, more yeah a bigger portion than the verses of uh, sharia of hukum yeah of uh, 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 of hukum so uh, the the quran uh, make us inspiration that to to bring the 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 people uh, 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 to change the people minds, sometimes they need story and they need the the true story. And in UK is very good, yeah. So uh, I uh, I already uh, I, uh, I I ever helped by the father of Faiz. Uh, he uh, buying me some books, yeah, from George Sarton, and also some book from. Uh, 1001 uh, what is it the uh, for uh, so there are uh, uh, islamic invention yeah? Uh, yeah islamic invention yeah. is a good and it's in uk so i think uk is very open mind uh, when yeah. it is uh, uh, manage uh, uh, greatness uh, so i think uh, uh, we need to open all mind because we are not uh, uh, in political way we are just to say this is the reality and the truth uh, so there must be uh, a cooperation between civilization yeah there is a, uh, there is a, there is a cooperation between the civilization yeah we yeah i think we create you among we create you among nations and tribes so that you know each other is that right yeah yeah, yeah. that's the, the that's, verse that's, yeah. the, that's the beauty of islam yeah, yeah. So, uh, for example, now, why we do not know what happened between age uh, 1 Masehi to 16 Masehi? Why? Uh, and uh, West al always say that this is the darkness, uh, the dark ages period. Why? Because uh, West have nothing to say. And on the other hand, they do not want to say uh, something happened in China, in India, and also in uh, uh, in Jazeera al Arab, because this is uh, dominasi, uh, it's political domination matters. Yeah? So uh, they are not saying the true uh, history in uh, in us. Uh, different in Islam. Even if it happened in the West, we must say it to people because we have no political intention uh, talking about the history. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, if we can fit one last question in. Um, 
Uh, Ustad Rafi has asked, um, Ustad, you said that uh, Hassan bin Ali gave the Islamic leadership to Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan to unify the Muslim Ummah. Were they in war at that time? Uh, why did they fight each other? Aren't we as Muslim uh, a brother to each other? Okay, uh, actually, uh, sometimes uh, brother and brother have a, have a fight. Yeah, it's uh, common. Usually, uh, uh, common, uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, something that uh, uh, um, uh, that can be happen. But actually, we need to understand also that the communication level by the time in terms of lack of technology is something that must be uh, considered because uh, the communication itself uh, between uh, places and something it opened uh, many misunderstanding between people. Yeah. So what uh, happened, the war in Sifin, Sifin war between Ali and Muawiyah. Yeah. This is uh, something actually we can uh, know what Muawiyah said, we can understand and Ali, we can understand it also because it's a time of uh, how to make a prioritize uh, to have a solution to uh, find the killer of uh, Khalifa Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anu by that time. But uh, uh, in terms of lack of communication uh, and, and, and many uh, Khawarij yeah, uh, who playing uh, by the time there are um, uh, uh, Khawarij, the Rafidah, yeah, I think uh, the, the, the source problem at fight each other not between Muslim and Muslim but there are uh, a, uh, there are a party a small party a sect yeah sect which is uh, playing uh, between both yeah like uh, Rafidah and also Shia yeah uh, and then they 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 gain advantages between the uh, conflict yeah but uh, at the end, uh, if we learn deeper, we will find that Ali never want to uh, uh, fight with Muawiyah, and also Muawiyah not. It's not. It's only uh, something behind. So that's why uh, in our life we need to be aware uh, of people uh, between us. Yeah. So uh, we are brotherhood. Between brotherhood, there must be some people who are playing. Uh, which is not, uh, which is dislike if there are unity between us. Yeah. Uh, this is the inspiration that we can uh, take from uh, previous story. Okay, Jazakallah Khair. And I think that was all the questions. So I think we can wrap it up now. Okay. Uh, yeah, yep, that's all the questions. So I guess we can close the meeting now, inshallah. Um, okay. Uh, inshallah, we all have a good day. And uh, everyone may leave now. Uh, we have a quiz. Before oh, we, uh, oh, wasn't that quiz yeah. earlier then? No, the, no? the area quiz is for preparation for the lecture. Now the uh, quiz for the price, the door oh, price. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, you can you can join as well. Quiz please. then. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, okay we'll me, have a quiz then right now. Okay, let me uh, share the script for the quiz. Yeah. Uh, everyone can join the. Uh, prepare your uh, device. You can use your phone or your laptop. Can you see uh, the link and the uh, code for joining the quiz? There are three questions. Uh, three questions from Ustad, uh, and there will be three uh, winners that uh, will have the, the voucher the, to, as the prize. You can start to join now. I will be waiting for some time to get the participants yeah one two Faiz and Marzuk can join as well oh yeah I'm already in yeah Faiz already in because
because the patients uh, not too much, so we maybe uh, try to find the fastest one to answer the questions. There is a question in the chat room. Question. Let's check. He asked the link. Oh, uh, it's. Okay, there are 19 participants now. There are more, more people here. Okay, just okay, 21, 22. Okay, just wait for one more minute and then we start the quiz. Uh, Okay, yeah. Uh, answer the questions in your uh, on your device. Uh, we can start now. Bismillah. Okay. Okay, I think we we've got the winner here. Raisa, Amania Izati, and Mujadid. Yeah, uh, those are the winners. So Mujadid, Amania Izati, and Raisa. Uh, can you please uh, write down your type down your email in the chat so we can send you the price, the uh, voucher price. Thank you. Mujadid, Amania Izati, and Raisa. Okay. Uh, before uh, we finish, I would like to tell you also our program uh, to help the students in Indonesia that uh, cannot uh, do uh, school from home because of the connection problem, the device, they don't have the devices, the internet. So you can help them uh, via this uh, donation here. You can click this link, uh, bit.ly slash hai underscore dlp, or using this uh, bank account to uh, donate to the distance learning program to help the students uh, in Indonesia to afford the school from home. Okay, I think uh, that's it from me. Don't forget the winners to type down your email. Raisa already typed down. Uh, Raisa Mujadid and uh, Amania Izati. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, I hand it back to Faiz. 
Okay, so thank you. Uh, start for the uh, very amazing speech about the uh, Spain and Islam, uh, in Islam in Spain. Sorry, and thank you to all the participants that came. And I believe there will be another session similar to this on um, March, inshallah, and I will be closing the workshop by asking everyone to say Alhamdulillah, and we close by duas, kifaratul majlis. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu ala ilaha ila ant astaghfirka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah Ustaz. Jazakallah semuanya. Terima kasih banyak. Jazakallah Ustaz.